another edition of Diffin Cast. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm with Andrew Funderberg, all the way from Oregon. Andrew is the founder and creative, uh, I was going to say genius, but creative <laughs> person behind Fundy Software. Um, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome, Andrew. It's been, it's been a few years since you were on Tiffin Cast, and I wanted to have you back uh, for several reasons. I mean, things have changed in the industry. Things have evolved uh, all for the all for the positive for the photographer, and I wanted to get your input on how things uh, were, and then how you got into the business, and s certainly talk about where things are heading. Um, so let's start with what got you started in this business. So uh, in in photography in general, you know, much like uh, a lot of people, you know, I took some photography darkroom classes in in uh, college, you know. Fell in love with uh, putting the silver paper in the developer and watching the photos magically appear. Um, and and then you know what really got me back into photography is when my kids were born. Actually, that's when I really got back into it. Uh, and then uh, I lived in Japan for 13 years. That's where my kids were born, and that's where I got my start in professional photography. I started shooting weddings. Um, I was asked by Iron Chef Restaurant to contract with them because you have to contract with the location to shoot in Japan because it's very locked down, uh, very different from here. And uh, that's how I got started in the wedding industry. And you know, I got started uh, pretty much right after the D100 and the, the what was it, the 60D or the 30D on the Canon side? I can't remember which was the first one, but right right in that period when when digital SLRs were just starting to be somewhat affordable, you know, and that was back on my D100 with six megapixels cost me $2,400 and I thought it was the best deal <laughs> in the world. Yeah. You know, now you can go down to Costco and get a better camera for 500 bucks. Indeed, you know? indeed. Um, so uh, it's, been, it's been a fun, fun journey. What is, what is, um, let's, let's, let's back up a little bit, a little bit more. Sure. I mean, you, you, st you, you said you were a wedding photographer, so obviously you were creating albums and delivering albums to your clients. At what point did you stop and think, wait a minute, something is not right with the process. I wanted to come up with something of my own. I mean, is, is that how it yeah. worked out? Well, yeah, it was completely out of frustration. Uh, the, you know, it was just all out of frustration. I, um, so I had one, sorry about that. I had one uh, month where I had, I don't know how many weddings I had to process and design albums for. And at that point, the only album design software available were based on templates. And I just, over and over and over again, I'd get to the point where I would like a design, but you know, where I had two verticals and one horizontal, the template had two horizontals and one vertical or something like that. And so I was, you know, literally trying to fit a round peg into a square hole over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, what, that's what really sparked the idea. And that's where the whole concept behind uh, creating a piece of software and designing with that is, is to dynamically create the layouts based on the images versus the other way around. And, you know, for me... Uh, the, the, the first advent of digital album software and all other album design software, even today, are based on templates where you put your images in the template, which for me is the same as basing digital on old mat technology. You know, it used to be back in the day, wedding photography, you'd, you'd order your mats, mm -hmm. you'd have your mats, and then you'd, then you'd order... Yeah, and there'd be you know a mat with two five by seven verticals on it. So you'd order your two five by seven verticals. You stick your your prints under your mat and stick it on the page. Well, doing digital design with templates is basically the same thing. So for me, that means we're we're making twenty uh, first century technology based on twentieth century concepts. So it just didn't make sense to me. And so uh, that was the goal. You know, and there's been many evolutions of, of album builder and, and how it's gone. But the concept was always the same is that trying to to remove the barrier of placing images and getting them all aligned beautifully on on a page uh, and removing that barrier of having to match up 
some preconceived notion of a design with, with the images you have to put into it. So that's, that's where it came from. And then I think uh, with, with uh, the new software, which I can show you later, I think we've really blown the concept out of the water. Like it's just, it's, we've completely changed the way that photographers can uh, approach photo design in general. So that's kind of a long-winded answer to your short question. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. Um, you know, we'll get to your the new, the new version of Album Builder. Um, I'm very excited about it. I've seen a few uh, videos that you uh, posted on Facebook and uh, on your own website. And um, we'll get to that in a second. But I, yes. I, I, I've, I've been amazed at how um, from beta, I remember we had a chat when you were still living in Japan, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... And you were you were still like thinking about all this, and you're you're like, okay, I gotta, I'm thinking of moving back to the U.S. and uh, set up shop in Portland and all this stuff. And you made that jump from uh, not knowing, or perhaps you knew, and then you you just, just sort of jump right in. I was mm -hmm. I've always been amazed at how that 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 occurred, and I was wondering about trying to get a little bit into your head and and just say, Fundy, help me out. Tell me what yeah, were you, how so, were you, how did you process that that decision really? So, um, it's either bravery or stupidity, um, and I think it's a combination of the both. You know, I um, when I decided to make uh, album builder, I I had uh, version one. I I have a degree in literature from the University of Oregon, and then I have a master's degree in teaching English as a second language. Um, I have a master's degree in business, but when I studied, I was concentrating on the business of uh, growing my English language school, which that was my main business in, in Japan. Um, so I really didn't think it through. So, and then I, and, and also I had no funding, right? I just used some secret savings account that my wife didn't know about. Like I couldn't even use our real savings account because my wife would get mad at me. So, uh, <laughs> It was really, really stupid. Like if somebody walked to me up off the street and they told me that they were going to do what I did, I would think they were idiots. But okay. uh, I think it boils down to um, I grew up in a very competitive household and just the, you, you had the option of uh, play to win or don't show up. <laughs> you know? So you just, you just keep going and keep chugging along. And I think uh, that's... The only thing that's driven driven me, uh, we had um, this. Uh, it's funny. I think back on it, and it was when when I uh, was in high school. I played football. My dad was a football coach, and every day at the end of every practice, we would end with this chant. And the chant was, "Every day, in every way, we get better and better and better." And then you say, "Like go Pioneers" was the was the team mascot. But you know, I think that philosophy stuck with me. In in that you know, no matter what you're doing today, tomorrow you have to be better. That's fascinating because um, I think you and I have talked in private about this, and and it's my, it's it's an utter astonishment uh, is that album builder from beta to what it is today has evolved. Every time it evolves, it evolves not just a multiple of two or three times better. I feel like it's gotten better almost by a multiple of fifty. Or a hundred. I'm not just saying that just to yeah. flatter you. I'm just saying, I, I, every time I look at how, how the heck does this guy keep thinking about <laughs> new things to put into Album Builder without it getting bloated and slow and yucky for people to use? You know, um, I think that's, that's what's in my mind. Like, how does he do yeah, that? I don't, how does I he... don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but I think, uh, I think there was... Um, you know, if you if you talk to uh, old school programmers, like uh, old school programmers talk about the elegance of code, you used to be able to fit Microsoft Word on a floppy disk. You know, when I was in college, you used to be able to fit on a floppy disk, and the reason I know that is because none of the students had any money to buy it because it was like a gajillion dollars, and people would go to Kinkos and steal it. You know, throw it on a floppy and they'd steal it because it would fit on a floppy disk. Mm -hmm. And if you go and look at that version of Microsoft Word, it did 90% of what the current version does. Is that right? right? Wow. The current version, the current version is who knows how big it is, probably like what 100 megabytes, 200 megabytes, something like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, 
yeah, you know, floppy, 1.4 megabytes. You know, it was about, it was about a megabyte for the whole program. It wasn't real pretty, but it did exactly what you needed done. And so that, that, that concept of trying to get as much done with as little interface as possible. Um, and you, Apple's fantastic at that. They're like, the, they're like the, the king of UI design. Um, sadly, I think some of that's going away because they're <laughs> yeah. they've lost a lot of their leadership. But but they're the kings of getting the most done, doing as many things as you can with one button. You know, is that what uh, Fundy Fundy's products? I mean, all the products seem to be doing. I mean, is that is that your attempt is well, to to try and minimize the the angst, the frustration that you perhaps felt when you first started putting albums together? And you're saying, hey, uh, from, from the user's perspective, let's give uh, my clients, you know, the guys who are, and, the, and the gals who are going to be using yeah. Album Builder or all the other products, a, a way to simplify, make more efficient the, their workflow mm -hmm. and thereby saving time. Yeah. So I think um, that's one thing. One thing when... Uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but moving from a Photoshop plugin to a desktop program, we have much more control in the desktop program, especially with the user interface, because we don't have to interface with Photoshop. So uh, one thing w when we were focusing on uh, the desktop, that was one of the main focuses with the, with the user interface, is to try to have as little user interface as possible. Um, you know, it just, just if, if, if something, and we'll kind of show you this, but when you you only have control of what you have selected in the program. So we don't have wasted user interface. So if you like, if you don't have an image selected, we don't have the zoom control available for that image because you couldn't use it anyway. Right, right, right. right absolutely. So, uh, so that was that was one of the goals. And then uh, and then overall, our, one of my goals over the whole, you know, evolution of of the the company, I, I in the photo. Uh, in the photography software space, I think there's only one other program that really gets it, and that program is Lightroom. That um, most software companies don't, you know, and maybe they know, they just don't care uh, that a professional photographer is dealing with hundreds, if not thousands, of images at one time, mm -hmm. right? You know, I see, you know, I see some of these plugins that'll make, you know, a photo, you know change the color and look beautiful and stuff. And I'm like, well, that's fantastic, but I got to do that to 200 more images. Right, right. So what's the point? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's like having a race car that you can't turn. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's got awesome. straight. It goes 300 miles an hour, and, but I'm going to die because I can't <laughs> turn. You know? So uh, I think that's really important. Gotcha. Uh, as the industry goes forward, I think that it's really important that, that uh, I think software companies that get that and tap into that are the ones that are going to survive. And the ones that continue to concentrate on doing one thing at a time are not going to survive. That's very interesting. So from, from, the, from the perspective of a photographer then, would you say uh, a photographer who's decided to do multiple types of photography would be better served than focusing on one type of photography? That's really tough, and that's that's that really depends a lot on the person. You know, I know some photographers that are chameleons, and they can do extremely different type of work for different types of clients uh, in different ways, and they're awesome at it. And but then I I know photographers that can't do that, and so it comes down to person, and then it also comes down to your uh, your market too. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, Portland, Oregon is a very different market than Los Angeles, for example, or New York, and you know, or where where you are. It's a very different market. So, you know, some of it, some of it just boils down to survivability. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. You know if you're in a smaller market, you cannot survive doing one type of photography. It just can't be done, right? So, you just have to. Got to. You right? got. You have to right? diversify, right? Right. If right. if you live in a, you know, if you live in L.A., you know. There's so many people you can. You can just specialize in one thing and be done because there's a gajillion people that want that one thing. <laughs> right. You know, right. If you live in a town of forty thousand people, there there aren't. <laughs> you just you know, you have you have to, to right. do everything. So let let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know, fr from from having worked and and nurtured this business for quite a few years now, uh, you know, you've come across 
photographers from all walks of life, you know, folks who have been starting to uh, think about photography to or who have been committed to uh, photography for, mm -hmm. I don't know, 20, 30 years and, and uh, maybe considered old school. Um, what do you see happening in the industry right now? What, what's the shift? What is the, the shift that is happening in the industry, if there is one at all? Um, well, I think, I think the industry is a lot better off now than it was, say, two or three years ago. Like there was a big shakeout two or three years ago when the economy turned and, you know, th things were really bad for a while. You, you know, every, mm -hmm. everybody, we were, everybody was talking about the end of the world. Um, it, it seems like uh, things have shaken out a little bit. Things have stabilized a little bit more. Um, but I think, uh, I think that people, especially, especially younger people, often forget to, to look backwards. And I think if we look backwards... Um, into photography, there were uh, the higher end places that had a studio, you know, maybe multiple uh, shooting rooms, um, and did higher end stuff for a smaller clientele. And then, you know, you then you had the Olin Mills, um, serve, you know, vol high volume serving that uh, middle income, lower middle income bracket. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I think that. When digital was first, so, you know, digital photograph photography got introduced in the heyday of also a huge technological boom, which created a lot of middle income wealth. It created, it, it created temporary wealth. And so everybody benefited on that. You could just, you know, you say I have a camera and then you can book 30 weddings and, and make a lot of money. You know, I think those days are over. Um, I think we're going to see a return towards... Um, the upper end being just fine. Upper end's always just fine in a, any economy. You know, you look, for example, like Nordstrom. Nordstrom did great during the reception, reception, uh, recession <laughs> uh, because it, it serves that upper end of the economy. And anytime you serve that upper end, you're more recession proof, right? And then uh, the lower end uh, was, was, was fine because it's based on volume, right? And you can adjust based on that volume. That, that middle ground is, that's, that's kind of the dangerous place to be in business, no matter what business you're in. Uh, because uh, the middle income people are usually people with families. Mm -hmm. um, they're much more sensitive to the economy. You know, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, you know I got, my pay got cut, so, you know, I'm, still, I'm always going to take care of my kids, so the, the extra stuff goes out. Um, so, you know, I think it's not... Um, just a sec. It's quite all right. Let me cut that. Cut that up. Uh, so I think the, um, you know, I think I think the photography market is simply going to better reflect the general market, and that is, you know, look look at companies in their target market and who is successful. You know, so you you have the higher end companies that are successful. If we take the clothing market for example, you know, you have you have uh, you know the Nordstroms. Um, which do just fine. You have the target, you know, which is higher volume, but still, uh, you know, targets mm -hmm. that that middle mm -hmm. uh, income. And then you, you you have you know the the Walmart's uh, higher volume, which you know I see is you know the 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 mall photography studio where you just walk in and it's you know gotcha. 70, 75 bucks and you walk out with three eight by tens and a frame or something like that. Right. Right. So you know I think I think. Uh, it's going to basically follow the general economy, um, just like any under, uh, other industry. So if you really want to know what's going to happen, just keep your eye on the general economy and, and keep your eye on what companies are doing well or poor okay. within that economy. Let's talk about um, Album Builder. Uh, it's grown up. It's become a, a desktop application now. Um, used to be an extension in Photoshop. Now it's uh, something that f photographers can use on their desktop, separate and completely mm -hmm. You know, outside of uh, Photoshop or Lightroom, uh, what 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 is what, what would you say is the uh, probably the best feature on the new version of Album Builder that excites so, that excites you? Yeah, maybe uh, should should we kind of dive in and, and show on the screen so I can show sure. while I talk about it? Absolutely. So I think I think the uh, let me switch to the screen. The the biggest feature is our uh, trademarked image drop zones. 
So okay. let me know when that comes th comes through there. I see it now. All right. So uh, let me go ahead and open. Uh, I'm going to start a new album here. You can probably cut this part out here where the where it loads. So uh, I just have a, a blank spread open here, and so the the, the most exciting technology are, is our image drop zones. Okay, so I'm going to drop uh, 12 images on the page here. And so drop zones basically auto, uh, images adapt to the drop zone. So as you move that drop zone around, the images adapt to fill that area. Okay. Right, and so that is the biggest key, technology. And so if we, um, let me go ahead and add a spread and... Let me open this one up, and so I'm going to move you over here. Let me get some verticals and horizontals together, because uh, then things get really interesting. So based on the drop zone technology, so watch when I, when I swap a vertical and a horizontal, the, the actual design will adapt to accommodate that. Oh, wow. So within that, and then, you know, drop zones align to each other. And so what, what we can do based on that drop zone is when I go to one of our quick layout choosers, uh, let me just uh, grab, uh, I'll just grab that design right there. So, you know, this, this is under the hood. This is one drop zone on the left. Okay. And then one drop zone on the right for the accent images. Mm. Right. And so technically... That's two templates, right? If I, I and I can, you know, I can write one template, two templates. But if we take into account all of the drop zone options here, right? Because we can add an infinite number of verticals and horizontals in here, right? So, in order to replace this one design with templates, let's say you could have a maximum of sixteen images on the right hand side, right? That is that that isn't the max. But let's say you could have the max. In order to figure out how many templates you would need, you would have to do two to the sixteenth power, right? Okay. Which is which is a big number. I'm going to use my uh, two to the sixteenth power. So uh, that's sixty-five thousand templates. Oof. Right, because because you have an infinite number of combinations with where right. you're where you're going to put the verticals and horizontals. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Right? Well, we don't have to create 16,000 templates because we can just shuffle at will. Gotcha. And then, you know, what, what happens is when we can, we can remove images from that drop zone all day and we can add images to that drop zone all day. Okay. It doesn't matter. So that's, that's the key fundamental technology is the image drop zones and how they auto adapt to your needs. So you don't have to get in the way of trying to figure out how to change a design or move the design or, or anything like that. And you know, you, if you want more white space on the top and the bottom, just hold down the option key and wow, do that, and then okay. uh, hit the and then hit the center key or choose uh, centered, and then it it's it's centered. Wow. You know, and if you want to, uh, you know. So it's 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 the first program of of in any domain, not just wedding photography, that allows you to freeform images like this, right? So, I mean, see how e easy it is to just adjust the design. It is. It is absolutely. Um, in terms of consistency in the design, though, all through not just one spread, but how about through the entire album? Is there a way to um, to set uh, parameters where uh, images on the right or the left don't go below a certain um, depth in the page. Is that possible? Or so yeah. So basically, in your album settings, we have it's called your page buffer. Okay. Okay, and your buffer is the edge around this drop zone. Okay, got it. All right. 
So when you, when you save your page buffer, anytime it creates a new image, it's going to make sure that page buffer is respected. Excellent. So in the quick layout view, right, so here's, here's the top and bottom buffer. Here's the page buffer around this side and this side. Mm -hmm. It's going to respect that. So, you know, as just, just as in a photographer's shooting, like you shoot and you develop a style and your style needs to be consistent. Right. Right. So does your design style. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So that allows you to have control over that design style and, and adapt it to your own needs. Excellent. So when, when a, a photographer is starting to use this, uh, mm -hmm. the images are, are they linked or are they dropped into the program itself? How does that work? So do you, uh, do you know how uh, smart objects work in yes. Lightroom? The yes. smart previews work in Lightroom? Yes. Right. So it, it's very similar. So uh, what happens, I can show you under the hood, so, um, and we'll kind of go, I'll, I'll go ahead and delete these pages and we'll kind of go back and we can actually show you how, how you'd actually design a whole album versus just playing with the drop zones. But if you go into your, so into your project, so the concept is that you have projects, right? So here's one project, here's another project, and it gives you a preview of the images in that project. So a project would be the Johnson wedding, the Smith portrait. Mm -hmm. You know the, you know the whoever's engagement session or whatever. So so uh, and then you can design multiple albums within that project. So it's kind of like mini Lightroom libraries, right? Um, so a project can have as many sub projects as they want. So you know you have your your albums and your blog collage and image branding and right. you know uh, all that stuff. And then under the hood, uh, when we import images into the project. Um, it creates smaller proxy images, somewhat like smart previews in uh, Photoshop, right? And so uh, each project here uh, has its own file, and you see it one file is about 200 megabytes. So that one file stores all of those image previews. So if you are a photographer that likes to work on the go or work on multiple computers, you can, you know, have your high resolution images on your external drive or your your um, your server in your studio, create a project, uh, unplug, design away, and the only time you need to reconnect is, is same in Lightroom as when you need to output the, the full resolution files. Right. Interesting. Wow. So, um, you know, we think it's a pretty cool uh, workflow for photographers. And then obviously if, you, if you, you can reconnect the images if you change the folder, you know, maybe you later did a final edit on the images, you can reconnect those, re-import, uh, etc. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, I love what uh, this is going to do for photographers, uh, whether you're a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer. I mean, it, this, this will essentially cut down the amount of time uh, one spends in front of a computer. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. If, if you'd like to, I could show you how you would design an album. Sure, let's do it. So we have, we have a design view, which is basically massaging a single spread, right? And then we have planner view, and planner view is like planning plus quick design in the album. And so, you know, you have a wedding here. This is uh, my good friend Daniel Stark's imagery. And you, you know, select multiple images. You can do the shift key or the command key, much like you do in Bridge or Lightroom. And as you drop images, on a page, it automatically chooses a, a design from the quick design. And so and mm -hmm. you can add images later. You can let me do this. Uh, you can move images between pages here. Wow. You know, you can uh, you can swap images within this mini design view, and you can also uh, shuffle the auto design just to get some inspiration of mm -hmm. what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Or you can go into the quick design mode, you know, flip left and right, shuffle the images around until you see something you like. Okay. So multiple ways to quick access. That. Gotcha. Excellent. And so even, you know, looking back, even version one where we didn't have any control I still had tutorials on the fact that you should organize your album before you design it because my theory yes. is that choosing which images go on which page 
is one side of the brain and designing is the other side of the brain. So we've kind of allowed you to do both at the same time here. What would you say, uh, how much time would, should it probably take somebody to design a, uh, let's say, a 30-page album? Okay, well, um, we're almost done. We're almost there, wow. We're on 24 and 25. Right, and obviously I'm kind of going willy nilly. You know, I would imagine that if you're charging a client a couple grand, you want to spend an extra five minutes or so here. <laughs> and then let me just find a good closing image here. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna steal this one down to the last page. There we go. Um, so we just did 30 pages, right? So organizing, and then then I'll go through and uh, do some. Final designs I like that one. That one I like as is. This one I'm going to go like that. And then we also have uh, everything's on a hotkey too. So you have all of your designs on hotkeys, so you can go through your hotkeys. Got it. Okay. And if you keep hitting the same hotkey, it does the same design but shuffles the images. Okay. So that's kind of fun. So we tried to make it quick, useful, but also a little bit of fun, you know, for everybody. When does this launch, Fundy? So we're having a pre, you can, you can pre-purchase now. Everybody that pre-purchases has access to the public beta on February 1st. And then official launch is February 15th. Excellent. So, uh, and this is cool too. So the cropping is available in this mini design view also to be able to adjust the cropping and all of that stuff. Um, and then... All right. Excellent. I feel like we're mostly done. Okay. You know, we can go nitpick a little bit, but uh, yeah, so that, that would be approximately how fast you can at least get an album 98% of where you have it, you know, and then, and then you know, in, in a real life situation, I would probably go through, and, I, and we have these on hotkeys too, just the left and right arrow, is just kind of go through the album and, you know, mm -hmm. make any changes or anything you like. You know, like I might, I might go ahead and remove that image because it doesn't quite go okay. uh, together. You know, if you, if you wanted to um, stack some stuff. And then actually, let me get, I totally forgot to show you some of the really cool stuff on the, uh, I'm going to create a temporary spread here just to show you. I totally forgot to show you the advanced controls within the drop zone. So, you know, as, as you get into a drop zone, we have advanced controls where we can control the number of columns it creates within oh, wow. that drop zone. Okay. And then, and then we can control, so now I have six columns, I can control how many images are in each column. So in the second column, I'm going to throw one image. Every other column, I'm going to have one image. Oh, that's fantastic. That's pretty, that's pretty granular in terms of uh, control. That's really amazing. Yeah, so we, um, you know, there's, there's, there's no other program on the planet that can do that kind of stuff. And we're really, really proud of that. So, for example, like this spread right here, I might do this. Okay, so I want that one image by itself. So I'm just going to go into the advanced control on that first column. I'm going to do one image, and then oh. everything else will shuffle down. Wow. So that's how that's used in the real world. Got it. Right? And then if I remove this image, it auto adapts and it keeps that single image. Got it. There. So well, when, when you export all of these layouts, how are they exported out? What are they exported out as? So uh, currently they're exported uh, just as JPEGs. Uh, later this spring, we're going to have layered PSD export available. Um, and then uh, that's probably, oh, well, full res JPEGs, web res JPEGs. Um, early spring, we're going to be adding like a post to Facebook. So you, if you're on a spread, you can just quickly hit a button and show off on Facebook. Uh, and then uh, layered PSD coming later in the spring. That's fantastic, man. Um, kudos to you and your team. Really, uh, this is... Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes I throw an idea at the team and I'm like, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, this is great. This is fantastic. I really think it's good. As you've mentioned it, uh, uh, on your own post on Facebook, uh, this is going to be a game changer. And, you know, when somebody says game changer, you're thinking, oh, man, really? And but when you see it, you're like, yeah, it's game yeah, changing. We've never, you know? we've never used the phrase before in publicly. Like, we've never said anything like that before. But I think this really is going to change how people approach design. Yeah. And, you know, I've talked to uh, a lot of people that never designed albums because they just loathed it so much. And they're like, now I'm going to design albums and I'm going to make more money, right? Because... It's all about making more money as a photographer, right? So definitely. Well, I think it's also serving the, your clients quickly too. I mean, that's been my my little yeah. bugaboo is that you know I keep futzing around with the with the design forever and ever, mm -hmm. uh, and now I just go, well, here you go. Here's option number one, and they come back, you know, yeah. quickly, you know, and say, hey, we'd like to make some changes. No problem. Send them back the revised version. We're done. You know. Yeah. Uh, the old version of way or the old way of doing things would have been, you know, uh, just a, just mind numbing in terms of how many changes and how many things you would have to do to to move things around. Um, what do you think is coming next uh, for Fundy? I know you'd you'd mentioned uh, uh, when we were talking so, before we started recording, we, you talked about a roadmap. Uh, I'm interested in knowing what else is yeah. up, man. What what else? So, what else you yeah, got cooking? So, so our um you know, just just as anyone else, you know, we, you know, our, our lives are getting more and more cluttered, right? Just with everything. Everything's more cluttered. So we want to put as many tools within one program as possible, right? So, so to keep, you know, we all hate going, using five programs to do one thing, right? So, so uh, we're calling the desktop program Fundy Designer. An album builder is just one module within that designer. And then going forward, um, I'm going to go ahead, actually, let me go ahead and kill the screen share here so we can go ahead and talk face to face. Sure. So going forward, um, we, we are going to be adding modules to the Fundy Designer. So uh, in, during uh, mid and late spring, we'll be adding in blog collage and image render, which many people use for, for blogging and, and posting to Facebook uh, and whatnot. Um, it's going to be the great thing with Image Brander, once we have Facebook integration built in, is it's it's a quick hmm. brand your images and and you know and and for example, for me personally, I'm going to have one of my projects is going to be my portfolio, and that's just always going to be there, mm -hmm. right? And so I can always go into my portfolio, click on an image in my you know Image Brander, and repost it to Facebook anytime I want. And so it's going to be really flexible as a marketing tool, also. Excellent. Uh, same with blog collage. And then uh, the next module that we're coming out in, in, in early summer that we're really excited about is Gallery Designer uh, for designing, um, I don't know if you can see me, you know, one image split across multiple panels. Um, you know, in wedding photography, it's used a lot when you have one of those, the great, you know, uh, great shot of the bride and groom in a, in a wide panoramic, you know, selling three canvases, three vertical canvases as one big horizontal image. Uh, being able to do that with with no work, just you know, drag and drop um, multiple images on multiple canvases or or, or frames, uh, you know, layouting uh, layout uh, wall art, collage wall art, whether it be metal prints or canvas prints, et cetera, which which hopefully um, you know leads to more sales. I really feel like for in this in this day and age for for a, a photographer to really make money it's about selling big ticket items. Right? You can't be nickel and dimed with 8 by 10s. It's about selling big wall art and a big album. Right? That's that's where the money is. So, uh the easier we can make that process the better. Mm -hmm. And then uh so so as that's going into place, um we have four album companies and four labs uh, already in agreement where we're going to have one-click ordering within the application. So you design the album all within Fundy Designer, choose your cover materials, design your cover, click a button, and off it goes. Wow. Uh, so, and then we'll have the same thing with, with the gallery art. So if you design a wall cluster with four canvases, you don't have to then export the images, you know, adjust the the canvas wraps and stuff and you know go into rows and choose the right sizes and stuff you just click a button and the whole order goes phenomenal so you know we hope that those those little things save a ton of time you know it's all it's all about you know if you save five minutes 
every step you take, you know, you, it's, it's a lot of time savings over the day and then, and then over the year, Excellent. you know, yep. Indeed. so, Indeed. so that's, that's the, that's the, the roadmap. And then later in, um, you know, we have, we have the Fundy album proofer online and the current Fundy designer you'll export and then upload, um, later in this say, year. Yep. Yeah, we're going to be introducing. We're we're actually going to be redesigning uh, an entirely new proofing system, where it's it's attached to a project in uh, in Fundy Designer, so you can proof the entire project to your client. Which means, if you proof the entire project to your client, you can load in all, for example, seven hundred of your wedding images into a gallery, design the album, you proof the whole project. The client clicks on a photo in that design, and one of the options is change this photo. And when they choose that, it's going to pop up their whole gallery. They can choose which photo they want to change it to. Are you serious? And, but wait, it gets better. So then, <laughs> once you're done, you go into Fundy Designer, and there's notes on your design. And one, you click on a note, and it said, the client would like to change this to image 432. Accept this change, yes, and it's going to make the change for you. Oh, my God. Right, so so we so we want to create a design ecosystem for the photographer where you don't have to wow. do all of this stuff to to get things done. You just you just do what you need to do, and everything works together. So so you can just get your work done faster. On that very happy note, I'm gonna. <laughs> Really, so man. We have a, I, I'm we have just a very busy year ahead of us. Yes, you are going to be busy. But I tell you something, man. I am. I am really blown away by all these ideas. And 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 you know, if it was somebody else, I would say, yeah, yeah, ideas, ideas, whatever. <laughs> but you know what? I know this is going to happen because it's happened already. I mean, uh, desktop, uh, you know, version is coming soon, and I, I can't, I'm, I'm just thrilled for you, really. Um, congratulations on all these uh, things coming together, man. Uh, you broke up just a sec. I gotta wait for that to come through. Okay, you want to repeat that? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> well, I said I was, I'm just thrilled for for you to for having you know having these ideas and making it thanks. all happen. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean we're I'm in a lucky position. We have a great team. We have fun. What we do, you mm -hmm. know, we 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 have we have a roadmap now to follow, um, and it's gonna it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I hope. Uh, Cool. People enjoy watching the journey, and, and, and I hope that it does make a fundamental difference in, in how photographers approach design, um, what, you know, on, on all, all levels of, of everything design, because it's, it's uh, that connection between the photography, the design, and the products, I think is really, as I said before, that, that's, that's the profit link for the photographer, is, is that link to those big ticket items and, and making those big sales without putting a horrendous amount of work into it. Wonderful. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. I appreciate the, the time. You, uh, I know we spent a good 45 minutes on this call, and yeah. every, every second of it was uh, like mind-blowing, really. So well, thank I you. I hope we didn't bore anybody. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, think, I think people are going to be very excited about uh, watching this and definitely learning more about uh, the new products that are coming uh, very soon to Fundy Software. Thanks, man. Take, take care. Thanks. See you guys later. Bye.